Have you ever been asked to critique a research paper as part of an essay or critique a research paper as part of a journal club? And have you wondered how you're meant to do this? Because these papers have been published, have been peer reviewed, so surely they should be perfect. That's exactly what I thought when I was first given a research paper to critique and I genuinely didn't even know where to begin. This is ideal. I don't, I can't <laughs> pull out anything or any issues with this paper and no one tells you how to do it which is where the big issue is in academia you kind of have to learn by yourself so what i've developed is a critique a research paper template so in this template i will be going through all the steps of how to critique any research paper so how to pull out information from the title from the abstract from the methods introduction and how to really interrogate that and question everything that you've been told within the research paper to the point where you are able to at least have an idea of ways that this research paper could have done things differently question why they use certain methods instead of other methods and this can form a really strong critical review of your research paper and that's how you do it and if you want to get access to this template, then the link will be in my description down below. So feel free to go and click there. And if you are not able to access it, then I will be going through the majority of it in this video. So win-win for everyone. So within this template, we have eight steps. So we're going to start from step one and go all the way to step eight. So step one is looking at the title and the abstract. This is one of the parts that is most missed when people critique research papers. They tend to go straight to the results or straight to the discussion. Actually, the title and the abstract could be written better or could be missing some really important aspects of it. So when it comes to the title, we want to think about three things. The first is clarity and representativeness, <laughs> a long word. So does the title represent what the paper is actually speaking about? And this can be something that you think about last after you've read the paper, but it is really important. Then engagement and interest. Does the title engage and interest the reader? If you're someone that would be interested in this topic, would that title allow you to look into it and you know, kind of pique your interest? And then informativeness. Does it give enough information that supports um, what it's going to be speaking about? So that's when it comes to the title. Within this template, I've actually gone into a lot more depth. I'm just summarizing for this video. Then I've given you some space to actually look at that research paper and say, yes, the title is clear enough or no actually it could it's missed out a really important part from the results or actually it could have mentioned the specific keyword that it doesn't and if it did mention this keyword it could have attracted more readers so really just trying to pick out and you know make sure that you've critiqued all, all the aspects of the research paper from the beginning the second is looking at the abstract so you're really assessing if the abstract is a good enough concise summary of the results and again i think for the title and abstract you need to kind of do this last be aware of it um, and you know obviously think about it at first but i would say once you've looked at the whole paper and you've read everything you can come back to the title and the abstract at the end so the abstract i've written it should be complete it should be engaging it should align with the paper and accurately reflect the results and it should also have keywords that are relevant to the topic and again i've left some space down here for you to fill that in for your particular um, paper the next is looking at the introduction so there should be some sort of lit review slash introduction right after the abstract and again if that isn't there then that's something that you could comment on but i'm sure it would be there you might want to think about the research question or the hypothesis is it relevant is it clear is it precise and does it flow logically? Does it make sense to you when you read it? And is the lit review uh, critical enough and comprehensive enough? And also look at the papers that they include. Are the dates of the papers relevant? Is it timely? Is it recent papers? Or are they really old papers that aren't relevant anymore? And how much do they connect to the research question? So again, I have kind of summarized all of those questions up there and I've left some space for you to fill that in. And that's how you can critique the introduction. The easier parts to, to critique are the methods and the results, of course, because there are so many different ways and variations that you can do this. So for the methodology, I've boxed this up into four different aspects when it comes to thinking about the critique. The first is the research design. The second is sampling and the participants. The third is data collection. And the fourth is data analysis. So these are four different kind of, I would like to say categories, but when I look at methods, 
I won't speak about the analysis and the sampling at the same time, right? Let's think about sampling first. Let's think about whether they use the most robust methods to actually get these people or these participants to take part in the research paper um, and think about sample size and demographic and things like that. And then later on, I'll think about the data and analysis and the methods that they use to actually look at the data. So these, I've kind of categorized that in four different sections and I've left questions for all of them. And again, like I said, lots of space for the methods for you to fill it in because this is probably the most heaviest critique that you'll have. The next is looking at results. And again, I've categorized the results critique into four different chapters. You've got the presentation of the results. So actually looking at the physical presentation, does it make sense for them to have used certain graphs, certain visual aids? Um, how clear is it? Is the data quantitative or qualitative? If either one, like, is it relevant the way they've shown the results? Then the statistical significance. So for this, you're looking at interpretation and um, confidence interval. Are they using the right mathematical symbols? And have they included that information for you? Because sometimes you'll find that they actually don't. And then data synthesis and visual aids. So like I said, any tables, any charts, graphs, things like that. And I know this can be really hard. When you first get this task, you probably think, well, these papers have been peer reviewed. They should be ideal. But yes, they're, they're good. They've done their job. They have presented the information in the right way, but there could always be a better way. And actually when it comes to critical analysis of research papers, you can compare to other research papers unless you've been told not to. You can actually look at the results and say, look, this paper is you know, presenting a very similar thing to this other paper. They've used a the table. These guys have used a graph. I prefer the table because X, Y, and Z. Um, and so you can do that and it is still critical analysis and actually showing that you've done some wider reading as well. So that's quite positive. And as always, I've left some space for the results too. The next step, step five, we're moving on to the discussion. So again, I've boxed this up into four different categories. You want to interpret the results. So how have they interpreted the results within the discussion? What are the limitations? Have they been clear on like things like transparency of the authors, the impact on the generalizability? How much can they generalize these results? And any suggestions for improvements too. Then you've got implications for the future, theoretical, practical, things like that, medical. And then how are they integrating this within the research question and the gap in literature? So those are all points that you want to think about when it comes to the discussion. Like I said, I've gone into more detail, so feel free to download it in the link down below. And I've got some clear space for you to write. So you can actually use this template in, in a number of different ways. You can download it like me, print it out, write on it, and you're good to go once you've done. You can also put it onto an iPad or a tablet, um, some sort of like device, and then actually write on the device. And then of course you can keep using it many, many times. Um, or you can convert it to a Word document and type on it as well. So there are so many different ways that you can use a template, which makes it really flexible and really easy and practical for anyone to use. The next section is the conclusion. And again, I bunched this up into five different categories. So I think the conclusion is usually a strong one where you can pick out quite a lot of critique. So the first section is the summary of findings. How have they summarized it and how have they aligned the summary to the objectives? The next is the ethical considerations and discussing whether you know, there are any considerations that they've discussed within the paper at all. Um, contributions to this field, so thinking about how much of an innovation are these results, how novel are these results, and contextualizing their contributions to the wider academic landscape. Synthesizing the results and the overall assessment, so thinking about the paper as a whole. The next section is actually step seven, which is referencing. And I again think that this is another missed out um, component when people think about critiquing. When you think about the references, you want to think about two different things. How relevant are the sources and how good are the quality of sources and how diverse are the sources? So look at the references and say, okay, are they relevant to the topic? Are they like from really good research papers and research journals the sources are they diverse is it do they come from a variety of different perspectives and i think this is very important in the social sciences especially are they just referencing one type of newspaper or one side of the politics like are they referencing both formatting um and also journals are they peer-reviewed or not because that's really important 
Then, last but not least, we've reached the end. The overall assessment. So here you're looking at your overall impression. Once you've read everything, you've critiqued it all, what are your impressions overall? Do, your, do they align with the objectives? Uh, is it clear and concise? Does it contribute to academia, to medicine, to pharmaceutical, to whatever it is? And any potential impacts and recommendations for future research. Okay, so now you've finished writing from step one to step eight, I also have a word bank here at the back. And this word bank are some phrases and some words to help you express your opinions when you're critiquing. So for example, when you're speaking about the methods, you can say the methods were um, reliable, they were biased, unbiased, adequate, inadequate, ethical, the sample size, they were transparent, systematic, rigorous. These are all words that you can use to help describe the methods. Let's think about um, another one. Let's look at if you're thinking about presentation. You can say it's well organized. You can talk about clarity, conciseness, jargon, readability, visual aids, tables, citation styles. So I've got a really, really long list actually, like a very long list of um, words in the word bank that you can use to help support you with writing. And these can just help you pull out your thoughts and make them more coherent and just help you identify different aspects of the research paper that you want to write about. So like I said, this template will be in the description in my link down below um, and feel free to go and download it. And you really are just looking at every single aspect of the research paper and interrogating it, critiquing it, thinking that it's not perfect. If you get away from that mindset, thinking that this is a perfect research paper, then you're allowing yourself to be open-minded and delve deeper into trying to find flaws and mistakes and actually ways that they could have done things better. It's not always about mistakes, but ways that things could have been done better. So yeah, I hope this video you found helpful and let me know if you do end up using this template. I would love to hear your thoughts on it and feedback and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.